Hey, what's going on guys? It's Alex here from Simple Mods and welcome back to another video. Now, it's a very exciting day today. AMD's Ryzen Threadripper CPUs are finally out. And if you're out there searching for a new motherboard for your shiny new Threadripper CPU, then I have the ASUS ROG Zenith Extreme motherboard. I'll be showing you guys what comes inside the box and then we'll go over all the features that this motherboard offers so you can decide if it's the right board for you. Let's check it out. So I've got everything that comes included inside the box laid out on the table here, so we'll go through everything. First of all, you will get a nice ROG sheet of stickers. So that's something that ROG have included in the past with some of their other motherboards. So it's definitely a nice thing to have and some pretty cool stickers on here if you're into that sort of thing. You'll get some ROG cable labels, so you can label all of your cables um, the way you want to, so you can sort of color code them. Um, you get a nice ROG coaster, so that's something nice to have. I actually do have one on my desk that I use on a daily basis. You'll get a ROG case badge, and this is a nice hard sort of chrome case badge, so it's definitely nice. Got the, your manual here, so you can find out everything you need to know about the ROG Zenit motherboard from here. And now something that they don't seem to be including uh, in this box now, I'm just wondering if maybe they're tired of me giving them out for free in all of these videos, is it doesn't have a 20% off cable mod uh, coupon in here. So you do actually get one with this motherboard. Now I'm trying to look for it and it's nowhere inside the box and it's not hidden anywhere inside this manual. So unfortunately you guys don't get another 20% off cable mod cables uh, from this video. So yeah, that's disappointing, but that's okay. Um, you'll definitely get one if you do buy this motherboard. So you can get your 20% off of cable mod cables that way. Now we get the three SLI bridges here. So you'll get your normal two-way HB bridge. You'll get a three-way SLI bridge and then of course a four-way SLI bridge. So this motherboard does support four-way SLI and there are no crossfire uh, bridges included obviously because AMD cards don't need a crossfire bridge anymore. In terms of uh, SATA connectors, you'll get six of them in total. So there'll be two in each bag and there's one with a straight connector on both ends and then one with a straight and then a 90 connector on the other end. Another cool thing is that you do get uh, one of these GPU support brackets. So it's like an anti-sag bracket. This was included with another motherboard that I checked out uh, quite recently is the ASUS TUF X299. So I believe that that was one of the first motherboards that they started included this with. So I hope that I get to uh, see these included with much more motherboards in the future as well. And it's definitely a nice thing to have. And this little box here, this tiny USB stick was included inside and I've actually plugged this in and it is an eight gig USB stick and it does come with a software that will help you download all of the latest drivers. So that's definitely something cool to have. What I've noticed also that I've plugged in it has actually detected the motherboard that I'm using. It's a different motherboard than this one. So obviously the software that they have included in this uh, USB drive is something that's able to detect your motherboard and let you know the latest drivers. It'll pick up the drivers that you already have installed or let you know if they're updated or if they're up to date and, uh, and not. So yeah, that's uh, definitely cool to have. And then again, it's an 8 gig USB drive. So it's something that you can actually use as a normal USB drive if you want to get rid of all the software and all that that comes included in there. Now this motherboard uh, does have a DIMM.2 card. So this is something that Asus have introduced with the Maximus 9 Apex card. And it's actually just a customized DIMM memory slot. And they do call it the DIMM.2 because it is uh, allowing you to plug two M.2 SSDs using this card. So you do get one on this side and then one on the other side. The motherboard will support three in total. So you get your three M.2 um, screws just here. Another thing is uh, if you want to install a fan onto the DIMM.2 card, and they do include a bracket so you can better cool those DIMM.2 drives. And if you're worried about temperatures, um, you will get a fan extension card and then you'll get the screws and the cable uh, that comes along with that. You'll get two RGB uh, strip extension cables. So you'll get the one for the normal 5050 RGB LED strips, and then you will get one for addressable RGB LED strips. And this little thing here is a 10 gigabit ethernet card. So it's another really cool thing that they do include on some of the more premium motherboards. You'll get some temperature probe cables. And this is uh, your front panel cable connector so you can use this to connect all of the front panel cables outside of the case and then quite easily plug this into the motherboard just using one connector and then finally you will get two wi-fi antennas so this motherboard does actually uh, include the new wireless ad standard 
So it does have one antenna for that and then your other antenna for the more older standards such as uh, wireless AC. So that's everything that comes inside the box. Just gonna bring this motherboard and we'll check out this beast. The ASUS ROG Zenith Extreme is definitely a very nice looking and premium motherboard. However, it's not cheap as well. So it's about $879 in Australia and $549 in the US. I currently don't have a Threadripper CPU sample. I'm still waiting on that before I can do some testing. So this video will be like I've done in the past. It will give you a good full overview of the motherboard and all of its features. Overall look and feel, it does feel very premium and it's an extremely heavy motherboard. It is an EATX form factor and I can't quite make out what makes it so heavy though. I'm not sure if it's the huge TR4 socket or what, but it's definitely much heavier than your standard motherboard weight, even for such a premium board like this. On the back though, it does have a support bracket or a cover that may add a bit of weight as well, but I believe it is made out of aluminum, so it can't add that much. But anyways, enough about the weight it's definitely not a bad thing the fact that it's heavy so when it comes to looks asus seem to follow their familiar formula of a neutral color featuring gray and black colors throughout and of course it does feature rgb lighting that will allow you to customize it to your style and build it will have an rgb streak just over the io cover so just in this area here underneath the zenith extreme branding and that will follow through all the way down to the chipset heatsink just on this area here that will light up rgb and then the rg logo will light up as well and also on the back uh, with that cover that i showed you earlier it does have an rgb strip mounted just underneath that that will give the motherboard a very nice glow so in their marketing material you'll see them use this wavy rgb color now of course you can fully customize that and set it to any static color that you want or a combination of colors using the different modes available. You also have this mirrored area here. So just this area on the chipset there. It does look cool, but you do have to be careful with it as it does scratch quite easily. Whoever handled this motherboard before me did manage to scratch it already. And also wiping it also leaves small micro scratches on it as well. So it's nothing too major. However, I just thought I'd mention it as some people may care about this, especially after spending hundreds of dollars on a premium motherboard such as this one. Also just underneath the IO cover. So just in this area here, there does seem to be uh, what looks like a 40 millimeter fan, which should help cool the VRM power delivery although I'm not sure how much noise that will make, so I'll have to do further testing once I do get my CPU. Also on the IO cover, so just here, there is also a very small display. So that's definitely a cool addition, something that Asus have also included on the X299 Deluxe motherboard that they have. So that was the first one I believe that featured this display and it's what Asus calls Live Dash OLED. So this will give you all of your motherboard readouts and all that. So if you have any errors, there's no Q code uh, LED readout or anything like that. You do have that display that you can also customize as well. So that's definitely a cool addition. So technical specs, of course, the motherboard is on the new huge AMD TR4 socket on the X399 chipset. Now this isn't to be confused with Intel's latest X299 platform. That's something completely different. So it's a very cheeky thing that AMD did there with the X399 naming, but yeah, I definitely like it. So this motherboard will support the latest Ryzen Threadripper CPUs with the top of the line chip being the 16 core 32 thread 1950X with the 1920X and the 1900X following just under that currently. So you'll get four 16X linked PCIe lanes. So just the ones here and all of them will feature the metal reinforcing around them and they will be wired as follows. So the top one will be 16X, then 8X, 16X, and then 8X as well for the bottom one. So these are utilizing 48 of the 64 PCIe lanes offered by all Threadripper CPUs, which is pretty insane. And then you'll also get a 4X slot just here, and then also a 1X slot just here. So if you are running two graphics cards, you use the top slot, and then this slot right here. So they'll be running at 16X, 16X. With three graphics cards, you'll be using the top one, second one, and the third, so they will be running at 16, 8, and then 16. And then of course, for um, four GPUs, you will be using all four of them. So they'll be running at 16, 8, 16, 8. So that's definitely not that confusing when it comes to PCIe lane allocation. Now in terms of memory support, we have quad channel support on all Threadripper CPUs. So you can use all of the eight DIMM slots for a maximum supported memory capacity of 128 gigabytes, with the manual stating that the maximum supported frequency speeds are of 2800 megahertz, though I do think that with some testing, I'll find that higher frequencies should work as well, but that's not something that I can confirm in this video. 
Now, when it comes to M.2 support, you have uh, one slot on the motherboard just underneath the chipset. So it's just in this area here, and that can be easily accessed by undoing these three screws. So there's have one here and then there's two there and the um, heatsink will come right off and then you can easily install the M.2. The heatsink will also be able to cool the M.2 SSD as well once you have one installed as Asus do include a thermal pad pre-mounted on the heatsink. You'll further get the DIMM.2 card which I did show you guys previously that will allow you to install further two M.2 SSDs on it and there is also a U.2 connector on the board as well. In terms of SATA you'll get six SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports, so just the ones there. I'll now cover the connectors and starting from the top left hand corner, I'll, I'll work my way around. So just at the top, just here, um, there is a water block sensor, which does indicate to me that uh, this motherboard will have something similar to what the Maximus 9 Extreme motherboard had, and that was its very own unique um, looking water block. So you'll have to probably take off this heatsink here and then also the heatsink that's hiding just underneath the um, IO cover. But this is just me speculating here, just based on the water block sensor there. So there's nothing that has been confirmed at the moment. Now, further from that, there is an RGB uh, strip header. So that's one of two. So this is for the normal 50 50 RGB LED strips. Further to that, you will have your CPU fan, the main, and then the CPU optional fan. You will have two 8-pin uh, EATX connectors for the CPU power. Then you have a start and reset button, something that's definitely very handy to uh, include on the motherboard. You'll have, of course, your 24-pin cable. And just here, um, you will have a PCIe switch. So that's something that's very handy and it's something that I've actually used in the past. So you can see there's one, two, three, four buttons on there that you can sort of switch on and off. And what that will do is it will basically turn off the four main 16X linked PCIe lanes. So if there's any issues and you're running four graphics cards in there and you're having trouble with one of them, it's keeping your system from booting up or something like that, you can easily just switch off one of the lanes there. So if you're all water cooled and you can't take out the graphics card in order to test, then you can easily switch off the PCIe lens and you can figure out which graphics card is causing you issues. Moving down a little bit further from that, there is a temperature sensor just there that you can use with the temperature sensors that are included in the box. There's a high amp uh, fan header just here. So this one will support the maximum of 36 watts. So that's a high amperage uh, fan header just there. Just next to that, there is your front panel USB 3.1 Gen 2 connector. Further from that, it is the front panel USB 3.0 connector, then the six SATA ports, the U.2 connector, and then moving along the bottom, you will have the front panel connectors just here. There is also a water cooling flow sensor, so that's just that white connector just here. Then right next to that, there is a water cooling uh, pump connector. So that's uh, again, similar to the high amperage connector that's there. Uh, this connector here will be able to support uh, three amps or 36 watts of power. So you can connect pumps such as the DDC or the D5 pump directly to that and you can power it and control it off the motherboard using PWM. So just in this area here, um, you'll get some extreme overclocking features with the safe boot and the retry button as well as an LN2 mode support. Now I'll admit, I don't know that much about these features so I won't go into any more details. And just in this area here, you also do get a water cooling uh, sensor. So you get a temperature sensor for going in and then out of a component. So you can sort of measure the temperature sensor that way. And then you also get another temperature sensor for your case here that you can use with those sensors included in the box. Uh, just here, there is a fan extension connector. So this is for the fan extension card that does come included in the box. You will get further to that another USB 3.0 front panel connector. And just here you will get a USB 2.0 uh, front panel connector or internal connector. And then that is also part of the ROG external connectors is what they're called. And with these one, I do believe that you can use them with the um, ROG OC panel. So further to that, there is a chassis fan. Then there's two RGB uh, LED strip connectors. So one of them does feature the uh, normal 5050 uh, RGB LED strips. And the other one will be for your addressable RGB LED strips. With the addressable RGB LED strips, you will be able to connect the individual LEDs on the strip itself with a maximum of 60 LEDs um, supported. 
Just next to that, there is a TPM connector, an easy plug, and then your front panel audio. And then just in this area here, just underneath the IO cover, just between the dim slots here and the IO cover, there is another chassis fan header just there. Taking a look at the rear IO, you will see that it does have an integrated IO shield, which does explain why there wasn't one present in the box. So you will have a BIOS flashback button just here. So that one will allow you to flash the BIOS or upgrade the BIOS um, without even having to install a CPU or anything like that into your motherboards. That's definitely a cool feature to have. You have your clear CMOS button here. You have your Wi-Fi connectors, and then you will have what looks like eight USB 3.0 ports. And then you also have the one here that will be for the USB BIOS flashback. So when you're using the USB BIOS flashback feature, you will plug your USB into this port here. You will have this port here um, with the keyboard function, which does enable uh, further customization using mechanical keyboards and stuff like that. Then you will have two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, so one type A and one type C. You will have a gigabit ethernet port, and then of course all of your audio connectors as well. And then just in here, what looks to be like an exhaust from that fan just in there in the top that I showed you guys before. So this motherboard is definitely feature packed with ports. So let's recap on some of them. In terms of USB 3.0 ports, you will get 12 of them in total, eight on the back and then four via the two internal headers. In terms of USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, you will get two on the back and then one via the internal header. And in terms of USB 2.0 ports, you'll just get the two ports via the internal header. So for fan connectors, you'll get six in total. So you'll get the CPU main and the CPU optional and the two chassis fan headers. So all of these ones will support one amps or 12 watts of power each. And then you also have the high amperage connector plus the water cooling pump connector, which both of them support three amps or 36 watts of power each. So meaning that uh, you can connect water cooling pumps directly to either one of these headers. And of course, they all support PWM control. You can do that through the BIOS or through the um, ASUS software. And that guys is the ASUS ROG Zenith Extreme motherboard, locked, loaded, and ready to rip. I hope you learned everything you needed about this motherboard. And if you have any further questions then leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks a lot for sticking around all the way until the end. If you enjoy my content and subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other videos, smash that like button and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.